Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink, I have in sample form, it's by Noodlers, Navajo Turquoise. The uh, Navajo, of course, being the largest group of First Nations people in the United States. I believe a census conducted about a year ago has them at a little over 300,000 tribe members. So, yeah, it's, I mean, they're, they're one of those Native American groups that if you're uh, not from the United States, you still would have heard of. Um, but yeah, uh, have a very famous language, unbelievably complicated, beautiful sounding. They are, of course, from what's called the Four Corners area of the Southwest. Um, so where Colorado meets New Mexico and Arizona and Utah, I believe. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I need to look this stuff up before I start recording. And of course, of course, uh, turquoise being a color, but also a uh, natural gemstone often found in Native American uh, jewelry and art. So, rather love the name. Also, very lovely color. However, there's this thing about turquoise where turquoise just as an ink color just looks like turquoise which is kind of amusing because the actual stone turquoise has a lot of gradients in it and different variations and densities of blue but anyways moving on so turquoise tends to just be turquoise so in finding inks to compare it to there were plenty because the, a lot of them kind of look the same so here's Navajo turquoise sort of the the obvious comparison that came to mind was Noodler's turquoise eel which you'll see gets just a bit darker and maybe shades just a tiny bit more, but yeah, and then Lamy Turquoise, which at the root is kind of the same color, but just doesn't shade as much. And Pelican 4001 Turquoise is pretty much identical. It is identical to Lamy Turquoise, so. And then Toucan Bright Blue, which is maybe just a touch lighter than Navajo Turquoise. I'm going to be saying turquoise a lot in this video, I can tell. Now, the two pens I used were these. This is a pen and ink sketch with a broad nib. And I'd say this nib is just on, like, a hair over onto the side of wet. It's, I mean, barely wet. And then also this Esterbrook SJ. And if you're familiar with Esterbrooks, you know that there are a bunch of different types of nibs. This one being, my camera will focus. So you'll see a 155 nib, but if you see underneath it says Greg, that's referring to a certain, a certain type of shorthand called Greg shorthand. Now, shorthand is a, a note-taking system, is loopy, and we don't really use it anymore. But the point is, it's a lot of fast writing where you don't necessarily pick the pen up off of the page. So this has a very ready flow, but a very, very fine nib. All right. Let's check out the chromatography. Different pointer this week. You can see where that initial drop was put, but yeah, and then it's just sort of light blue, and then it gets a little darker, and then there's this dark band up at the top, and then I let it dry, which as you can probably see, the only real difference is this dot got a tiny bit darker, and the band up at the top just isn't quite as noticeably dark. Paper test, top down in density, Claire Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. I'll try and hold this still, but I am so caffeinated. Yeah. It's, I hope this comes through on camera. It is a lovely shade of blue. It is vibrant. Um, generally, when I think of turquoise, I think of something that has just a tiny, tiny bit more of a hint of green to it. But yeah, this is a very lovely shade of blue. And it has some shading, as you can see, but it's not in-your-face intense. Like, you can sort of see here in the J, and, uh, yeah, I mean, okay, granted, that nib is so fine, it's kind of hard to tell, but even there, you can kind of tell, like, there versus there. It's nice. Now, this is very well-behaved. There was no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen, which, for some reason, I thought this ink was going to be one of those ones that sheens quite easily, but, uh, as you'll see, that's not necessarily the case. Oh, my camera's doing the neon thing. I shall fix it in post. Oh, please stop, camera. Anyways, um, 
as you might be able to tell, it did dye the page a little bit. A lot of it washed away and it kind of feathered and exploded a bit. Camera, please stop making neon. But yeah. All right, next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. Yeah, as you can see, oh yeah, okay, so the tiny nib took four and a half seconds. The broad took nine, which is really not bad because it's very dense hydrophobic paper. Now to Rhodia. Again, you have sort of this subtle shading and you can most certainly see it in the writing. Of course, on camera it's easiest to tell in the broad. But uh, yeah, the really fine nib took six seconds to dry. The broad took eight, which I will take any day. Now, I think this sheet of paper was close to the bottom of the stack because it started to not necessarily behave super badly, but you get like, it almost looks like it wants to start to feather here in the T, and then there's like maybe one or two, and then this starts to look just slightly wooly. So yeah, maybe it would have behaved a little bit better, but anyways, the flow I'd say was just slightly wet for this ink. I'd say it's a six out of 10. So maybe if you just like a slightly wetter ink, this would be good. You know, one that is not gonna be out of control wet. But yeah, very well behaved, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no sheen. I said maybe there was some echo from the broad, but I think that's, you know, if you could see it at all anywhere is maybe in the scrubby, so. Yeah, oh God, the camera's doing the neon thing this week. Fun. Anyways, uh, as you might be able to tell when it isn't glowing, uh, it did dye the page just a tiny bit and most of it washed away. It didn't want to stick around, but I don't know, maybe if your life depended on it, you could recover that. Next up is Tomoe River Paper, which I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain it, but I actually really liked the contrast of this ink on the cream paper. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's just me, but something about it really, I really enjoyed it. So here you most definitely get what I call a halo effect, which is where you get a dark outline around really richly shaded areas. You can see it in the writing too, but yeah. Anyways, it's, uh, it shades beautifully here, which that, which this paper's known for. Oh, sheen. Can I get it on camera? Right there. It's red sheen. There's just the tiniest bit of it, but I was laying it on really thick trying to see if I could get some sheen because I thought this was a sheeny ink, but apparently not. Now this ink, this paper, does draw out dry times, which it most certainly did here. That really fine nib still took nine seconds to dry, but the broad took 17, and we've seen some broad writing on here take 30 seconds or more, so I will totally take that. Now, uh, please stop doing the neon thing. Anyways, uh, it didn't dye the page much, which was nice, but it did take away a lot of the, the color. Uh, it's extremely light, so not, not awesome. Now, as I said, I did lay it on really thick trying to get that sheen, so let's call this human error. So that is, that is uh, user abuse, I guess. So yeah, really lovely. But the writing, the general writing, since it is a fairly light blue, you would have to be pretty sensitive to it for that to bother you. I consider myself sensitive, but yeah. All right, so for the next three tests, I only used the extra book with the really fine nib, except to write the name. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see this. Do you see the difference in line width here, where it's like needle thin to here, where it almost looks like a Japanese medium? It's, it's really broadening out. So yeah, there is a lot of spread and a lot of feathering. It's not great. Um, the broad, of course, gonna be very problematic. Now, it took two seconds to dry, which isn't too bad. Now the color is still very bold and vibrant, which is nice. Sometimes absorbent papers really sort of suck the vibrancy out of an ink. Camera, really. Now it did feather and explode, but there is something very dark at the center of this. More absorbent paper does tend to suck ink in and make it harder to wash out. So there is spread, there is feather. And despite this being an absolutely like microscopic nib point, there is some bleed. It's just not showing up on camera for some reason. Oh, there. You see all those little dots? I don't know if I'd say that's full bleed through, but it definitely was coming through. Now, next up is Mead Notebook Paper. 
or again, I only use the fine except to write the name. And although this ink often outperforms the 20 pound copier paper, it is a thinner paper. Uh, so it took one and a half seconds to dry. Camera, what are you doing? Uh, there is some very wooly texture. There is some feathering. But the color is still so bright and vibrant. It really is lovely. I, yeah, but you do, you do have a lot of show through, but this is a, you know, a very thin paper. So, and this paper hates water. So yeah, it dyed the page, it feathered, it exploded. There we go. So now lastly is moleskin notebook paper where I'm running out of accurate modern no moleskin notebooks, so little tiny pages. But yeah, here, it's still quite bright. It's still quite vibrant, but you get this really intense wooly texture. You get a lot of feathering. It is not pleasant. Took four seconds to dry. It did not like water. That would not be fun to recover. It feathered and exploded. And despite this being an absolutely tiny nib, look at all that bleed. I mean, okay, that's a scrubby and that was written with a broad, but still, that's a lot more than you like to see from a, like a practically a needlepoint nib. All right, so there you go, Noodler's Navajo Turquoise. It is most certainly a turquoise. Uh, it is a very bright, vibrant blue. It is slightly wet. It sheens a little bit. If you really push it, I guess you could get it to sheen. You know what? I kept thinking that this was a sheening ink. If you have experience with this ink sheening, leave a message uh, in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. So yeah, for your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.